Now we've got two competing standards for type safe remote procedure calls or RPCs in your Next.js or Nest.js or Tansac Start application. It's TRPC and ORPC. So in this video, we'll compare those things and we'll develop this handy grid that you can use to choose between raw API requests, server functions, TRPC or ORPC. Let's get right into it. First one we're gonna take a look at is TRPC. And to do that, we're gonna go and create a Tanstack start application. And to do that, we're gonna use create start app. This is an application I run. This is a CLI builder, and it just happens to have configurations for TRPC and ORPC. So let's give it a go. So I'm gonna call this one TRPC test. And importantly, down in add-ons, I'm gonna select TRPC. I'm gonna bring that up in my editor. Now let's fire that up and have a look. All right, so here's our app. And what we're gonna do is we're actually gonna build this up. We're gonna start looking at raw API access. So post and get endpoints with Tanstack query. And then we're gonna look at server functions. Then we're gonna look at TRPC. And then we're gonna look at ORPC because you're gonna see the different layers of type safety and input validation as we go through these. And it'll give you some sense of what your different options are. And at each point, then we're gonna use a to-do example. So we're gonna start off with this Tanstack queries to-do list. We have our to-dos here. We can say, you know, new to-do, and we can add it. And yeah, you know, it looks pretty good. So let's go and see how this is actually implemented. All right, so if I go over here to routes, we can see API demo TQ for Tanstack query, to-dos. We see up at the top some in-memory to-dos, and then we define our server route. So we've got get that returns the to-dos and then post that takes the incoming JSON request, gets out the name from that, just a string, and then adds that to the list of to-dos and responds with the new to-do that it created with a new ID. The corresponding UI code is just as simple. So right at the top of our UI, we have to manually define the type of the to-do because that hasn't been defined thus far. And we need that because we're in TypeScript and we want to use use query and we want the data coming back from the use query to be of that type so that we get type safety. So that's where we use the generic there on use query and we get back data, which is an array of to-dos. To go and get that data, we just simply call that API endpoint that we created by default, that's gonna be a get, and then we return the JSON off of that. Once we have that data, then we can format the to-dos, and then to add a to-do, we have an input field that manages a to-do, as well as a button that calls submit to-do. So what is submit to-do? So submit to-do adds the to-do, and then sets it to an empty string. So what is add to-do? Well, add to-do is a function that we get back from use mutation. We get the mutate function, we map that to add to-do, and then that, mutation function calls that same API endpoint, but this time with a post to go and add a new to-do. And then the body is the string. And once that's successful, then we refetch the list of to-dos. So really the important part is that there's no type safety between these two things. If the API contract of TQ to-do changes, then we don't get any notification about that on the client side. And on the client side, if we call it in a way that we don't expect, then I don't know what happens. In fact, actually, let's wrap this in an object and, and see what happens. All right. Now send in an object. Yeah, boom, because we get back an object and then when we try and render it, it blows up because in React, rendering an object blows up. So yeah, not gonna work. So that type safety is clear. The first problem with this, the second is input validation. We're not doing any kind of validation on that post request to make sure that what we expect to come in off that request.json is what we actually want. And if we want to do that manually, maybe we might use something like Zod or Valibot to do that kind of validation. Here, we're not doing any of that, and that's why it blew up. All right, so let's call this the raw API pattern and talk about what it supports and what it doesn't support, and we'll go and normalize that against all of our other options. So first off, does it support TypeScript? It does not. Does it support auth? Would it support auth if we had this authenticated? Yes, it would. You'd have to go and manually add it, but that's basically the same with any of these solutions. Does it validate inputs? Certainly not by default. Of course, you'd have to add that. You do get complete control over the URL. 
You do get complete control of the output of the API, meaning you can return any kind of JSON format you want, or an HTTP stream, or an SSE stream if you want. That's all up to you. But of course, because you define it, it's not in any kind of standardized format. Like, for example, GraphQL or OpenAPI. All right, so how can we improve on this? How can we make this better? Well, one great way to do that inside of systems like Next.js or Tansac Start is to use server functions. So let's go take a look at the UI for server functions. So if I go over here to start server functions, ta-da, we got another to-do example. Crazy. It's as if somebody thought, huh, it would be great to be able to compare these different mechanisms using to-dos. Amazing. Okay, so, all right, let's go and add another here. Add that to-do. Easy peasy, lemon squeezy. Let's see how this is actually done. Okay, let's take a look at the demo start server functions route. And right at the top here, we're gonna bring in create server function from React start. That's how we define server functions. And we use that create server function to define two different server functions we're gonna use. We're gonna use get to do's to get the current list of to do's. We're gonna define that it's a method get. That's great. So you can actually define the HTTP method that you wanna use. And then we're gonna define add to do. We're gonna put that one on post because we're adding. And then we get to define a validator. So we get to define an input validation flow for this to make sure that we're getting the right data. And then we're gonna define the handler. And in this case, the handler is going to read the to-dos from a file and then push on the new to-do, write the file, and then return a complete list of to-dos. That read to-do function just reads from that to-dos.json file. And then if it doesn't exist, it just goes and puts in some default to-dos. Okay, let's take a look at how we're gonna use this thing. All right, so this particular setup of Tansac Start is server-side rendered. And so what we want to do is we want to go and get those to-dos so that when we render the page, we actually render the to-dos right onto the page. To do that, we define a loader. And that loader is going to call that get to-dos server function, get back that data, and then we can use that data inside of the route by just saying data, And that gives us back a list of to-dos. Now, now all the UI stuff is pretty much the same. So let's just take a look at submit to-do. This is where we add a to-do. And... It's pretty interesting here. So if we go and change, for example, this to an object, well, we know that add to do takes a string. So that's actually going to give us the type checking right here. So we actually do have a completely end-to-end -end type safe flow with our server functions. So let's bring the grid back and we'll add server functions. So TypeScript, yes, you can add auth support. No problem with that. We get that input validation. All right, well, let's go and actually go back to the client and see what does the URL look like and what does the output format look like? All right, so if I add one more to-do, so the URL for this one is this long conjugation of the module as well as the name of the function. We just don't get to control that. So we don't get to control the URL of this endpoint, nor do we get to define what the payload is, nor do we get to define what the response output looks like. And this is not a standardized format. This is just something that Tanstack Start does in terms of how it does its server functions. It is not compatible with how Next.js does its server functions or other platforms do their server functions, nor are any of those interoperable. So there's really no standards going on here, but it is incredibly convenient. All right, now that we take a look at raw API use and server functions, let's take a look at TRPC so we can see what advantages it brings. So we'll start off by looking at the TRPC to do. We'll add hello again to our trpc to-dos list. And we'll take a look at how this is implemented. So we got our demo route right up here at the top. And what the demo route is doing is it's using a combination of React Query and trpc. In fact, in this case, trpc is basically built on top of React Query. So our loader, which is getting our to-dos at server-side rendering time, is calling prefetch query on our query client to initialize it with the query from trpc. So in this case, it's trpc to do's list. So where is that defined? Well, over here in integrations, trpc, and our trpc router has an in-memory list of to do's, as well as two public procedures, one for a list and one for add. List is a query that returns to do's, and add is a mutation that adds the to do. Both of these can be async, of course. We've got any kind of I.O. to do. In this case, it's just in memory, so it's not async. And then that to-dos router is added on to the overall TRPC router, and you can have as many of those routers as you want. So you can create a very sophisticated API here. And again, that type safety is routed all the way up to the client. So let's go and take a look back at our TRPC demo. For example, we can see here that the data coming out of that use query is indeed a to-do that has the ID and the name. 
as an array or undefined in this case if it's not ready. And then our mutation for add to do, well, let's try and add something to that. So add foo bar, and we can see that we get a typing error because that add to do mutation that we defined over in the router only takes name as a to do item. Super great. So I think you can see why so many people like TRPC. So let's go and add it to our list of options and see how it compares to everything else. So first off, obviously TypeScript, yes. Yes, you can add protected procedures to give yourself an auth support. It's got that input validation. In fact, it does all that for you for free. In terms of controlling the URL, you get to put that wherever you want. In the case of this setup, I put it on API TRPC, but you get to decide where you want that. And in fact, with V11, you actually now also get to define the methods that are used for setting and posting and all that stuff. All right, let's take a look at the request to see how it's formatted. The output here is super JSON, but that's because we chose that as the serializer. You can choose whatever serializer you want for the output. You can also have it send back SSE streams or HTTP streams. So it supports all of that. Now, in terms of standards, I'm going to say no, because out of the box, it doesn't come with something standards compliant, like a, say a GraphQL or an open API, although you could add the open API later with an extension. Now, one thing that's really interesting about TRPC is when you think from an architectural level, you could have one definition of your TRPC router that's implemented by, say, your 10 stack start application or your Next.js application, and then also have a React Native application that connects to that router to get those typings in, say, a mono repo. You could do that, and I think that's really interesting. But that would be inside of, say, one project, maybe inside of a, yeah, one organization with a company. So what if you want to have RPC endpoints that are type safe, but also are presented in a standard that can be used by say Go or Rust or given to a customer so that they can then connect to your endpoints? Well, that's where our RPC comes in. All right, so let's create another application and this time we'll use ORPC. So we'll select ORPC and we'll bring that one up. And now we see instead of TRPC to do, we have ORPC to do. We can add another to do. There you go. And let's go take a look at how this is implemented. All right, so let's take a look at the routes again. We'll take a look at demo RPC to do. This time we're bringing in ORPC from the ORPC client. I'll show you that in just a second. But if I take a look over here at list to do's, for example, we get back that list to do's has an array of those to do objects. So you can see the strong typing already. We're doing exactly the same thing as we were with TRPC. We're prefetching that query for Tansac query. Again, both of these systems are layered on top of React Query, so very easy to use. Let's go take a look down at our use query and our use mutation. So our use query there on line 19 is exactly the same as what we saw in the loader. What's actually happening is that because we did that prefetch, it's just getting that data right away. So when you're doing the SSR on the server, it's ready to go off of that loader. And the mutation is calling ORPC add to do call. And just like with TRPC, if I add you know, foo bar there, we're going to get an issue because foo is not recognized as an input to add to do. All right, let's go take a look at how the ORPC is implemented. So over here, we got a directory called ORPC. And within that router, router brings in two functions, list to do and add to do's. They're from to do's. Again, we have an in memory list of to do's. To define a function, you just chain on top of the OS variable or ORPC server. You give it, say, inputs. If you have any kind of authentication or anything like that, you can add use endpoints. You can also specify a path as well as a method. And of course, the handler here, where in this case, we're just defining the to-dos. Add to-do in this case uses Dazod to define the input schema and then has the handler to go and handle the incoming request. One of the things that's really cool about this is if we take a look at the routes, so our AP API RPC route is how everything gets routed to the RPC system. But there's also this API dollar. So anything that comes out API is going to hit this optional handler. And this optional handler gives you a UI on top of OpenRPC. This is super cool. So I navigate to slash API there. I get this full UI that shows me all of the different methods that I have. I can invoke them from here. I can see the different types of models that I have. This is amazing. And even cooler, I go back to the top. 
and I download the open API document. Oh, this is so cool. Okay. I'm going to go over here. I get the Tansac ORPC playground.json file. I'm going to go over to my postman, I'm going to drop that in there. I'm going to bring it in as an open API 3.1 with postman collection. I'm going to import that. And now we can see that I have a, the different postman endpoints. I get send, get back my data. This is incredibly cool. All right, so let's talk about how ORPC stands up. TypeScript, yes. Auth support, yes. Input validation, yes, you saw it with Zod. URL control, yes, you get full control over the URL that you want to use for each endpoint if you want to, as well as getting to specify what method you want to use. In terms of the output, this is essentially exactly what you send back. This is exactly the format of the JSON we sent back. No mutation on that whatsoever. And if you want to use HTTP streams or SSE event streams, those work as well. And then as a standardized format, well, you can see it right here. We were able to export the schema of our API endpoints just as easily as that, bring it into Postman, or you could use, use it with Go or Rust or whatever you want, and you get access to your endpoints. Really great. All right, well, I hope this helps you make your decisions between the different options that you have, raw APIs, server functions, TRPC, and ORPC. Of course, there are other things like gRPC that I haven't mentioned here, as well as GraphQL. There's a lot to think about, but I hope I've given you enough detail so that you can kind of get your feet wet. If you have any questions or comments, be sure to put that in the comment section right down below. In the meantime, if you like this video, hit that like button. If you really like the video, hit the subscribe button and click on that bell. You'll be notified the next time a new blue collar coder comes out.